Hi everyone, welcome to Self Care with Meg. My name is Meg and I'll be leading you through your practice. Today, uh, I am doing my Halloween flow, uh, the class that I taught during Halloween. I just didn't plan ahead and didn't film this video before Halloween and I love Halloween, so I'm doing it. Anyway, uh, so do check in the show notes. I made a Halloween playlist. If you're into that sort of thing, I certainly am. So we're going to start in child, or not in child's pose, in corpse pose, of course. So you can come onto your back. If you need to take a full body stretch, go ahead and do it. You can roll out your ankles, your wrists, open and close your hands, take a yawn or a sigh. And then when you're ready, you can rest a hand over your chest hand over your belly, using that touch, that weight, as feedback for your breath. Allow yourself to get heavy here, letting go of any urge to move, urge to do, so you can pay attention to the rise and fall in your belly, in your chest and start to even out that breath cycle. So if you can inhale for five, exhale for five, keeping it nice and even. And shut down your eyes if they're not already, allowing yourself to settle into the softness, the darkness of having your eyes closed and getting a little anonymity. Oftentimes if I teach lion's breath or any other breath practice that has uh, a big facial expression, I'll first teach it with eyes closed because it just feels more comfortable. It's just easier to do it if you don't feel like you're being watched. It takes away uh, the self-consciousness that can come with doing something out of your comfort zone or that you perceive as making you seem strange or weird or off in some way. So know that no one's watching you, right? If you can't see them, they can't see you. You can, you can let that sink into your subconscious. And that is true throughout your practice, right? No one is paying attention to what you are doing. Um, so if you fall out of a balancing posture or twist the wrong direction, or uh, you know, get turned around in some other way, or are making big facial expressions or sounds with your breath. It doesn't matter, right? Your practice is personal and your attention is personal. And as we just came through Halloween, again, my favorite holiday, uh, as a person who studied anthropology, I find it very interesting uh, to see what people dress up as. I think that people explore different parts of their personality via costume. It's going to take a certain type of person to dress as a superhero or uh, as a queen or uh, as a sexy cat or as a political character. And again, it allows us some anonymity, right? We are in disguise, so not only are we dressed as something that we aren't on the regular, but we are given the opportunity to explore a different part of our nature, something that might be dormant, that might be hidden, that might be um, something that we hide intentionally. Right, a, a more powerful or a darker or a sexier or a smarter uh, or a more outgoing nature. And the hope is, or my hope is, that when we try on these different parts of our personality through costume, we can see what feels good, see what rings true, and bring 
just a little bit of that back with us into our everyday life. All right, take one more full breath cycle here. Deep breath in, feeling your belly, your chest inflate open and pressing out all of the stale air. When you're ready, you can roll out your wrists, roll out your ankles again, take another full body stretch. And bring your arms by your sides, plant your feet on the mat, walking them up towards a happy baby. You can either have your hands on your knees or reach all the way up to your feet if you're ready for that and get some movement. You can kick into one leg, kick into the other if you need to really wiggle around, get some tantrum baby. Keep pressing your lower back down towards the mat, staying grounded through your shoulders. And release your feet, plant your feet on the mat, arms by your sides. Heels snuggling close to the sit bones, press your hips up, bridge pose. Point the tailbone forward, press the heels down and forward. Take another breath in to bring your arms up towards the ceiling like zombie arms. And then all the way overhead, back to the palms land somewhere above the mat. Letting the back of your neck relax. Lift a little bit higher, another breath in. Breath out, roll your hips down, bring your arms down by your sides. All in one motion, inhale, hips lift, arms lift all the way up overhead. Exhale to roll down, arms down. Keep that going on your own. Feeling that heat build in your body. Letting each round be a stretch, a lengthening of the armpits. Just one more round. And then once your arms by your sides, flop both knees over to the right. You can cross your right ankle on top of your left knee to deepen that twist. Maybe halo the arms overhead or bring them out to a T. Breathing into your waistline. And cross that ankle, knees come back over through center and to the other side. Left ankle crosses over the right knee. Bring your knees back through center. Pull them in towards your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. And start to rock and roll up and down. Get some momentum going. Navasana, boat pose. Landing on your sit bones. And then arms extend. Staying broad in your chest, strong in your legs. Maybe fully extend the legs if that's available. Inhale, exhale, low boat. Lower back comes down, reach forward. Inhale, high boat. Exhale, low boat. Keep it going. Moving on your own with your breath, always keeping the breath going. And if you need more, if you need more heat, you can tap the feet on your way up. Really, again, uh, core working, building heat from the inside. We'll be here for just four. Keep breathing, three, two, come all the way back up. And cross your ankles, plant your hands, tabletop, all fours. Tuck your shoulders over your wrists, your hips over your knees. Inhale, belly lowers, tailbone up, heart forward. 
Exhale, press the ground away, round spine, spread the shoulder blades. And then keep that going on your own, cat and cow, allowing yourself to be creative with the movement, knowing there's no right answer. Getting into what is primal. Come back to a neutral spine. Walk your fingertips about a hand length forward. And then shift forward so your shoulders are in front of the fingers. Move your shoulders over to the right. Slide all the way back to child's pose. Move your shoulders over to the left. And forward. Right. And back. Inhaling forward. Exhaling back. Keep that going, stirring the body, feeling that movement in your wrists and your knees, in the shoulder girdle. And I love to let out uh, some of my dark side, my, my elder goth um, around Halloween, even if I'm not in full costume, you can start to go around the other direction. You know, I love my, my contacts and my black lipstick and, and all of that. It's like I am my own spirit animal. All right, child's pose, settle all the way back. Let your forehead rest down. And stretch the arms out in front of you, lengthening in the armpits, inhale. Exhale, walk your hands off the right side of the mat, side body stretch. You can stack the palms uh, if that feels good. Inhale, walk your hands back through center and exhale over to the other side. Walk your hands back through center, downward facing dog. You can shift forward, tuck your toes, hips up and back or uh, pick right up from a child's pose. Keep the movement going as you arrive, pedaling out your feet Then step your feet hip distance apart. Make sure your fingers are spread wide, pressing the mat down and away. Spike the heels up and bend the knees generously. Inhale, exhale, both heels over to the right. Keep the bend in your knees, press into both hands. Pick the hips up a little bit. Feeling that stretch through the left side body. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, other side. Knees are bent, heels have fallen over to the left, press into your hands. Bring your heels back through center, baby steps to the top of the mat, one foot in front of the other, all the way up. And ragdoll, when you arrive, you can grab for opposite elbows, or let your arms dangle as you sway your torso back and forth, shaking out your head, shaking out your neck. Release the grip of your hands, inhale, half lift, long back, long neck. Exhale to fold. Inhale, roll up to stand. Keeping a soft bend in the knees, point the tailbone down. Let each vertebrae stack on top of the last. Arms come up at the top. 
Bring your hands down in front of your chest. Feel into your feet. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, cactus the arms. Lace your hands behind your back. Drag the knuckles down. And if grabbing, uh, lacing the fingers together doesn't work, grab opposite elbows. One-legged Tadasana. Left knee comes up. To tree pose, Rikshasana. Foot to inner thigh or inner calf without guiding it up. So playing with that, um, if you typically guide your foot higher up on your thigh, just see how this feels. Try and avoid being right on top of your knee. Pull the knuckles down, lift the sternum, lift the gaze. If you really wanna challenge your balance, shut down your eyes. Inhale, exhale, step your foot down, soften your knees and fold. Wash the arms up overhead. Release your hands down to the mat. Inhale, half lift to reset. Exhale, hands down, left foot steps back. Lower your left knee, half splits, Ardha Hanuman. Flex your toes back towards you, stretch your sternum forward towards your toes. Inhale, half lift. Exhale to bow. Walk your hands forward to lunge. Left hand stays planted, right hand high. Twist. Reach that right arm forward and twist a little deeper. Look up towards the ceiling. Inhale. Exhale, circle your right hand down to the inside of your foot. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Back heel grounds, extended side angle, left arm peels open. Stacking the shoulders, stacking the collarbones. Inhale. Exhale, skandasana. Keep your right hand planted, dragging it towards the back of the mat as you move, bending into the left knee, wings stay wide. Flex those right toes up, inhale. Exhale, both hands to the mat, ground the right foot, lateral lunges back and forth. All 10 toes face the long edge of the mat. You can walk yourself back and forth. You can drag the hands. You can come down to forearms and keep them stationary as you move back and forth. You can bring your hands onto your hips. There's lots of options here. But get into the inner thighs. Waking up the hips. And bend into your right knee. Both feet stay grounded, left hand plants, right arm up, twist. And both hands back to the front of the mat, low lunge. To step back, high plank. Lower all the way down. Untuck your toes, inhale, cobra, roll up. Exhale, roll back down. Walk your fingertips off the mat at shoulder height, point your elbows to the sky. Inhale, wide arm cobra. Lifting up, dragging the rib cage forward off the waist. Exhale, right shoulder dips. Inhale to come back up. Exhale, left shoulder dips. Inhale to come up. Exhale, forward and down. Press back, child's pose. Allowing your hips to relax, your forehead to relax. And spread the fingers wide, downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, hips up and back, shoulder blades spread wide. Letting your head hang in between your arms, keeping the shoulders off the ears. And feet hip distance again. Inhale, spike the heels, bend the knees. Both heels to the right. This time, left arm circles up. Stay in that uh, chair pose shape in the legs. Exhale, circle your hand down to the mat. Flip right over to the other side. 
right arm circles up. Right hand down. Again, switch. Left arm up. Back to the mat. Right arm up. And down. One more time through on your own. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Walk your feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Again, gather your hands down in front of your chest. Inhale, arms come high. Exhale, cactus the arms, broaden your chest and take the bind, lacing fingers together or grabbing for opposite elbows. Right knee comes up this time to tree pose, rikshasana, foot to inner thigh or inner calf. Press your leg back into your foot, lift the sternum, look up. Rolling your arm bones behind you. Soften your face, make sure that you are breathing. Inhale. Exhale, step your right foot down and fold. Lower your hands down to the mat. Inhale, half lift, wave up. Exhale, plant your hands and step back, or step your right foot back. There we go. Right knee to the ground. Half splits, Ardha Hanumanasana. Left femur plugs back into the hip socket. Feel some length through your chest, structure through your shoulders. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bow. Walk yourself forward to lunge. Right hand plants, left arm up, twist. Feel that twist moving from the navel up. Reach your left arm forward, look towards the sky. Right ribs wrap further underneath you, inhale. Exhale, left hand down to the inside of your foot. Tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. Extended side angle, right heel to the mat, right arm up. And I come to my fingertips here just to give some more space. You can also come up onto a block. Left glute is underneath you, inhale. Keep the arms, exhale, skandasana. Right knee bends, left arm stays down, left hand stays down. And both hands down to the mat. Turn the toes towards the long edge of the mat, lateral lunges. Feet are fully grounded. Playing with your depth here. Seeing how your hips are feeling after we've gotten a good amount of movement. Bend into your left knee. Right hand plants, left arm up. Both hands to the mat and shift forward to lunge. Then step back, high plank. Grip the mat, press it away to lower down. Untuck your toes, inhale, Bhujangasana, roll up. Exhale down. Fingertips walk off of the mat, elbows point to the sky, inhale, lift. Exhale, left shoulder dips. Inhale, back up. Exhale, right shoulder dips. 
inhale, press up, use your spine. Exhale, back down, nice and slow. Press back, child's pose. Hips all the way to your heels. Downward facing dog. On an exhale, lifting your hips up and back. Sending the sit bones skyward, deep breath in. Big breath out. <sighs> Again like that, maybe horse flutter your lips, inhale. Exhale. <sighs> Lift the heels, bend the knees. Both heels over to the right. Right hand stays planted, left hand high. Make sure your left foot is fully grounded. Pull your right knee into your chest, squeeze it in. Maybe kick it out to the side. Inhale. Exhale. Other side. Both feet plant. Soften the knees, both heels to the left. Right arm up. Right foot is fully grounded. Press into that foot as you pull your left knee into your chest. Extend the left leg. Inhale. Exhale. Both hands down. Downward facing dog. Walk your hands back to your feet. Forward fold at the back of the mat, gorilla pose. Slide your hands underneath your feet. Palms face up, let go of your head. Bend your knees as much as you need to to do this. Release the grip of your hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, roll up. Unravel to Samastitihi, palms face forward. Hands down by your sides, standing at attention. All right, we are going to take a walking meditation with our eyes closed. So, line your heels up with the back of the mat so you can feel that back edge of your mat. Roll your shoulders up to your ears, back and down. Palms continue to face forward, tailbone points towards the ground, press into the feet. Deep breath in. Big breath out. Shut down your eyes. And take small steps, rolling from heel to toe, coming all the way to the front of the mat. Once you feel the front edge of your mat, keep your eyes closed. Turn around and walk back. Feeling the texture of the mat underneath you. Taking your time, noticing if you have any urge to open your eyes and check your progress. Once you reach the back of your mat again, turn to face the front of your mat and wait with your eyes closed. Again, noticing if you have the urge to peek to see what direction you're facing. So just bring the, the visual sense back on board. All right. Again, taking your time. You can blink your eyes to open. Arms come up. Exhale, hands down in front of your chest. Lift your right knee up, one-legged Tadasana. Lace your fingers together, bring the hands over the knee, pull it in, draw the shoulders back, and guide your right knee out to the right, left arm reaches out to counterbalance. Option here, piece fingers to big toe, half happy baby, keeping a bend in the knee, just showing off your foot towards the front of your space. but you can stay with hand on the knee, if that's better. Wherever you're at, another breath in. Breath out, back to one-legged Tadasana. Arms will come up. Inhale, exhale, standing splits. Hands to the mat and walk yourself out. Three-legged, downward-facing dog. Inhale, exhale, knee to chest and step between your hands. Pyramid pose. 
Shorten your stance until you can ground your back heel. Swivel your right hip back, lace your fingers together, releasing just the index fingers pointing towards the ground. And you may be up so that your fingers are on your foot or on your ankle or on a block, right? But keep your hands laced. Say Pana Mudra. And keeping the arms, inhale, halfway lift, pointing index fingers towards the front of the room, lift the sit bones, like you're sticking your butt out behind you. Keep the arms, inhale, come up into a back bend. Inhale. Exhale, warrior three, sweep your arms by your sides. Step up onto the right leg. Flex the left foot, point the toes towards the ground. Pick up the triceps, broaden your chest, inhale. Exhale, high crescent lunge. Step back, reach up. Inhale. Exhale, open twist right. Keep picking up your back thigh, left arm up, right arm down your back leg, exalted warrior, inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Unravel the body, ground the back heel, heel to arch alignment in your feet. Sky archer, straighten your right leg, grab the right wrist, pull it back, flex up through the right toes. Inhale, exhale, skandasana. Sit low into your left knee, keep those right toes flexed up. Low lunge to the back of the mat, plant your hands towards the back of the house, back of the mat. Turn, pivot, right hand plants, left arm up, twist. And strong in your core, come up with your twist. Right hand forward, left hand back. Inhale. Stay for your exhale. Inhale, star pose. Pivot the feet to face the long edge of the mat, take up space. To goddess, exhale, bend your knees, bend your elbows. <sighs> Inhale, back up. Exhale, turn your toes in and bow. Prasarita Padatandasana. And keep lifting the sit bones. Walk your hands over to your left foot, grabbing the foot, the ankle, the calf, whatever's available. Pull your chest towards your leg. Inhale, exhale, release, walk over to the other side. Grabbing ankle, calf somewhere along the leg on the right side, pull your chest towards your knee. Keep pressing your feet away from each other. And walk your hands back to the front of the mat. Low lunge, step back, high plank. To forearm plank. Dolphin pose. Walk your feet towards your elbows, looking back towards your feet. Keep pressing the elbows down and forward. Pick the right foot up. Then place it back down. Pick the left foot up. And back down. Press into your hands. Downward facing dog, lift the elbows. Shift forward, high plank, and take your flow. Chaturanga Dandasana, or something else. On your way back to downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Sound on the way out. Whew. All right, last side plank, plank sequence. Bend the knees, spike the heels. Both heels over to the right. Left arm up. Shoulder comes over the wrist. Pick the left leg up. Inhale. Exhale, wild thing. Bend your left knee to touch the toes down behind you. 
Rotate your hips up, reach towards the front of the space. Come back over, downward facing. Soften the knees, heels fall over to the left. Right arm up. Lengthen out the legs, right arm high. Bend your right knee, step the toes down behind you, pick your hips up, reach front of the room. Inhale, exhale back over, downward facing. Walk your hands back to your feet. Gorilla pose. Again, taking care of your wrists. Toes all the way to the wrist. You can give them a wiggle, massaging. Let go of the back of your neck. And untuck your hands, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Roll yourself up to samastitihi. Standing at attention. Line up your heels with the back edge of the mat. Lengthen your stance, press the ground away. Shut down your eyes. I'm gonna take that same walk back and forth. Rolling heel to toe or toe to heel if you wanna switch it up, switch it up. Small steps. Taking your time. Once you feel the top edge of your mat turn around, walk back. And if you step off of your mat, you're not stepping into lava, right? There's no point system here where you get a reward if you, you know, take the shortest amount of time or the least amount of steps or anything like that. So be here with it. Right? Be here with your experience, however it plays out. And stand, keeping eyes closed once you're facing front again. There's no rush, you can always catch up. And blink your eyes to open. Arms come high. Exhale, hands down in front of your chest, lace your fingers together, left knee comes up. Pull the left knee in, then guide your knee out to the side, right arm reaches out to counterbalance. Strong in your hips, and then option again for half happy baby, piece fingers to big toe, or if it feels better to just crab claw the side of your foot, of course that's also an option. And breathe, maybe smile, relax your mouth. One-legged Tadasana. Arms come high to standing splits. Kick the left leg up, walk your hands out. Three-legged dog. Inhale, exhale, step through to pyramid pose. Right heel on the mat. Both feet grounded, both legs lengthened. Right hip comes forward in line with the left and lace your fingers together. Get any props you need. Index fingers release Sepana Mudra. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift. Staying here, pressing the feet away from each other, strong back to a back bend, coming all the way up, pointing your fingers towards the top back corner of your space. Inhale, exhale, warrior three. Arms wing by your sides. As you step up onto your left leg, Flex your right toes. Work on bringing your right hip down in line with the left. You might lose some height in your leg, that's fine. Inhale, 
Exhale, step back, high crescent lunge. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, open twist left. Right hand forward, left hand back to exalted warrior, right arm up. Sinking into the left knee, inhale. Exhale, warrior two, unravel. Check out your feet. Make sure your left toes are facing forward. Sky archer, left leg lengthens. Grab your left wrist, pull it back. Left toes up. Inhale. Exhale, Skandasana. Right knee bends, left leg stays the same. And walk your hands to the back of the mat, low lunge. Left hand to the ground, right arm high, twist. Strong core, press into your feet, come up with your twist. Wide arms, strong legs. Next inhale, star pose. Turn the toes, take up space. Exhale, goddess. Inhale to come back up. Exhale, wide angle, forward fold. Let it go. And again, walk your hands to the back foot, right foot. You can pull your chest towards your shin. Keep lifting the sit bones. Inhale. Exhale, walk your hands to the front of the mat. Hold on to your foot, your ankle, your calf. Get a good grip, pull. And walk your hands to the front of the mat, low lunge. Step back, high plank to forearm plank. Tiptoe your toes in towards your elbows. And then option here to get your feet in the air. If you have forearm stand, you can kick up into forearm stand. If you have a basket headstand, lace your fingers together, one pinky in front of the other so they're both on the ground. You can get the crown of your head in to that basket, press your elbows down so your head is just lightly touching the ground. Coming up onto your toes, you can lift one leg, you can lift the other. And if you wanna come all the way up into a headstand, make sure you're not kicking up, right? You don't wanna kick up when your head is on the ground. That's a lot of uh, force on your neck. So if you can pull your knees into your chest and lift one leg, lift the other, great. Or if you can pike up, great. But no kicking up into headstand. Be kind to yourself, be kind to your body. All right. When you are ready, you can bring your toes back to the ground if you have lifted them to downward facing dog. Walk your hands back up onto the mat, roll forward, Chaturanga Dandasana. To downward facing dog, to child's pose. Bring your knees down, bring your knees together and walk your arms by your sides. Forehead touches down. And grab onto your feet or ankles. I sometimes find it easier if my toes are tucked under here. Grab onto your feet or ankles. Start to lift your butt up and pull your forehead towards your knees, rabbit pose. Breathe into the space between your shoulder blades. Slowly release. Let your arms keep resting by your sides and rock yourself right and left like a little egg. And roll up to sit back on your heels and come all the way up to stand on your knees. Arms come high, inhale. Exhale, camel. Hands to your lower back first. 
Press the hips forward, loop the shoulders back. And if this is feeling good, you can try walking your hands down onto your heels. If that's still feeling good, you can untuck your toes if they're not already. Wherever you're at, big, strong breaths. Next inhale, come straight back up. Exhale, sit back on your heels, shut down your eyes. Intentionally lengthen your exhales to slow down your heartbeat. And come into a seat. We're going to take fire log pose or uh, full pigeon. So bring your right shin across the top of the mat so that it's parallel. Your heel is not in towards your groin. Nope, heels away. And then left shin stacks on top. So you have ankle over knee, knee over ankle. If this shape doesn't work for you, you can go towards this cross. Grab the back of the left thigh, roll onto your back. You'll be in supine figure four, same stretch. If this stretch does work for you, you can bring your forearms down onto your shin. Maybe walk your forearms onto the mat. You can also grab a block for your forehead. And then check in with your nervous system, right? We just went from uh, flow to being static here and getting deep into a hip stretch. So be with yourself through that transition. Use your breath, right? Yoga isn't necessarily um, relaxing all the time. Right? It is a way to release the tension in your body and to be with what is present, which isn't always relaxing. And it's, it's breath work, right? There is work to it. But still be gentle with yourself. There's never any need to force a posture and the breath is what is important, right? Make sure that you are breathing. And uh, the holiday that, that Halloween originated from, uh, Sahwain, the Celtic holiday, um, was one in which it was believed that the, the veil or uh, the divide between the living and the dead, um, what is knowable, seeable, and what is spiritual, uh, was less divided, was less separated. Right? There was less of a, of a separation, less of a wall there. And as such, you could possibly contact your ancestors or you could ask for advice or for uh, a glimpse of the future or some other wisdom. But part of it was dressing up in animal skins and dancing around fires and getting in touch with your primal nature, right? Getting in touch with your intuition, which I'm not sure if I uh, believe in, in being able to contact the dead or, or anything like that, but when we contact our primal self, right, when we intentionally get more connected, and that could be through ritual and through dance and um, other stuff, it can feel like we are making contact with the divine. It can feel like we are getting wisdom from somewhere beyond. That, I think, is how powerful the wisdom of our bodies are. 
All right, start to come back up. Roll yourself up if you have come into the supine variation. And then left leg unwinds out to the side. So your right foot is pulled in more, left leg out to the side, arms come up, inhale. Exhale, left arm down, right arm over. You can reach out for your foot if you want to. Inhale to come back up. Right hand plants by your hip. Stargazer, press up onto your shin. Press into both feet as you lean back. And come back down and we'll take the other side. Right shin on top of the left. Ankle over knee, knee over ankle. Or roll onto your back for supine figure four. And settle in, get any props that you need. And it's not just putting on a costume that allows us to explore the great variation within us, right? The different facets of what is hidden in our nature. We can do that simply by going to see music that we wouldn't normally go see, or hanging out with some different people, or uh, trying a different sport, or traveling, or just going to a yoga class that you've never been to before. Because you never know what is gonna speak to you. You never know what is gonna light something up inside of you that has been previously ignored or hidden or just laying dormant. And we are these intricate, infinite beings that have so many layers, that have so much to us. And I think that it is essential to explore that as human beings, to allow ourselves to give ourselves the permission to be more than one thing. Because we can get pretty stuck in our routine in showing up for our family a certain way and showing up at our jobs in a certain way and showing up for our friend group in a certain way. And we can get stuck being that one thing because that's what ex is expected of us and we start to expect it of ourselves. So when we have desires that deviate from that character that we've been playing, it can feel overwhelming, it can feel scary and feel like, well, where is this come from? coming from? Is this even me? But why not explore it, right? Why not see if that fits? All right, start to work your way back up. Right leg will come out to the right, left heel curls in close, arms come up, inhale. Exhale, right arm down or out to your foot, left arm over, and it can feel like a better side stretch to stick that arm straight up in the air. Moving the arm over isn't necessary. I'm trying to keep the chest open. Inhale to come back up. Left hand plants by your hip, roll up onto your shin, press into both feet as you lean back, stargazer. Come to a seat and all the way onto your back. Send your legs up in the air. Waterfall pose. You can stay in waterfall pose and if you do, it can be good to put a block underneath your butt and make it more comfortable. If you would like to move on to plow pose, you can tip your toes overhead. Make sure that you're not pressing back through your head the way it is in your shoulders. Inhale, exhale, roll yourself back out, one vertebrae at a time with control. You can draw bridge your feet all the way down to the ground, getting any props out of the way. Press into your elbows, maybe walking them closer together for fish pose. Let your head fall back. 
Keep your shoulders out of your ears here. It can be a, a kind of a dance between pressing the elbows down and, and getting the shoulders to come down. Press down hard through your butt. Shavasana. Set yourself up for your most comfortable corpse pose. Surrendering back into stillness, into darkness, allowing your eyes to shut down, your face to soften. Recognizing that this is the death of your physical practice. So no more effort, no more doing, just being. If you have the time, please stay in Shavasana for longer, giving yourself the space to rest. But if you're ready to move on, draw in a deeper breath, feeling that stretch from the back of your ribs. And slowly let it back out. Come back to some movement, reanimating, coming back to life. Offering out a full body stretch and then taking your time coming up to a seat. Once you arrive in a seat, you can place a hand over your lowest set of ribs, sitting up tall, breathing out into your touch. Keep your eyes soft, your face soft. May our practice be a place where we can explore our intricate natures. We can explore what is hidden or secret within us, touching into our great and terrible and powerful and beautiful and gentle selves. Deep breath in together. Big breath out. <sighs> Thank you for coming to your mats today, for choosing to show up for yourself, to take care of yourself, to spend time with yourself, and to spend some time with this community. Namaste. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for doing this with me. Um, again, check out the, the playlist that I posted. Um, I was really excited about it. Uh, maybe you will be too if you're, if you're into Halloween 
stuff. Uh, and until next time, I hope you can let something go.